Ja. This is Lake Cobbler, and we've just stopped here to have a look around. It's a lovely little spot. Okay. Oh, okay. wow. We might stop here for a we second. We might. Holy dooly, Batman. And we've got some lovely views ahead of us, but most interestingly, we have snow. We're going to see how we go with that, because we didn't really bring any snow gear with us. I guess we'll be going up that in a minute. Yep. <laughs> I guess we're going down this. <laughs> Iconic shot for the truck. Beautiful. That way. Oh, you can put the chop next to the tree and take it in 360 degree views. There's no one here. So we're driving past Buttercup campground um, where we stayed last time we are up this way but tonight we're thinking we're going to push on to Pineapple Flat and stay there. everyone tonight we're having dinner at pineapple campground we're having a really simple roast and as you can see behind me we've got the fire going by the river waiting for the coals to develop really quick dinner tonight in my camp oven which is sitting on a trivet I have a chicken and it was a great buy today at our local supermarket it was $35 reduced down to $6 simply because the date expires tomorrow it's as good as good it's a slow grown chicken stuffed with prunes and macadamia nuts so hopefully that will be delicious it's already trussed as you can see and I've just added some fresh rosemary from our garden into the pan I'm going to add as well some onions for flavour, some quartered parsnips, and these will cook down a little bit as well. You should probably have not quite as many veggies in there but we'll see how we go. And a little bit later on I'm going to add some capsicum. In the meantime I'll add some seasoning. and a smidge of oil. Simple as that. Once this goes on the coals, I'll probably cook it for about an hour and then I'll throw in the capsicum for about half an hour and about 10 minutes before it's finished, I'll throw in the, I've forgotten what this is called, throw in the asparagus, that's what it's called, and perhaps make some gravy. Let's see how we go. When you're making coals for a uh, camp oven, it's important you get a lot of heat in the bottom of the fire to build up all those coals. It's best to use small timber because it burns down really quickly and you get a lot more small coals in a lot shorter period of time. So we're just about ready to put the uh, camp oven on. We've got a pretty good um, bit of coals here and we'll um, drag some of these out and put them on the side here then put the camp oven on top of it and then we'll throw some on top and we'll show you that in just a minute. Camp oven roast, easiest meal you can make in the bush. Okay, so we're going to pull a bit of um, coals out of the bottom of the fire here. We'll probably put them over here on this section over here just outside the fire. 
and then we'll chuck the camp oven on it, which of course is just bringing over. Maybe some around the base over here too. Beautiful. We've replaced the coals a couple of times and dinner's been cooking for just under an hour. So we're going to pop the lid off and have a look to see how it's tracking. Got my hooky thingy. <laughs> it does have a technical name we discovered. It's a big roast, so parsnips cooking. Nice, it needs a bit more heat. Let's pop the capsicum in. And we'll put the asparagus in a little later. Yeah. Today we'll see us pulling out of Pineapple Flat Campground and heading towards Lake Cobbler along the Lake Cobbler track and then uh, we're going to head down the other side and towards Bright for the evening. This is Lake Cobbler and we've just stopped here to have a look around. It's a lovely little spot. A bit chilly for a swim. It's quite cold. It's maybe 10 degrees. And there's a campsite here, which looks okay. A couple of people camped in it um, and had some toilets too. And of course we've got the obligatory rubbish in the campfire because you need to leave your rubbish in your campfire. We're on Cobbler track, just out of coming from a lake and the view here is absolutely spectacular it's just after 11 in the morning and as per typical of Victoria the Sun's just breaking through the snow guns are down below us and the vista is amazing Oh, wow! 
We might stop here for a we second. We might. Holy dooly, Batman. Huh. Driving along the track and we've discovered a tree down. So we're just going to clear some of the smaller pieces and then we'll get the chainsaw out and uh, take the bigger pieces off it and proceed from there. Oh, look how pretty that is. <laughs> spot to camp. You, you'd have to place it yourself probably. Yeah, one, yeah. two fire rings. Yeah. This is MacGyver campground. Uh, we've just come down Lake Cobbler track which was interesting little drive. A little bit um, washed out with some erosion gullies in it. But we come down it okay. And we've stopped here for lunch which is lovely. There's a campsite here right on the river and it's also right on the road which isn't always the best. Uh, there's tables here, there's no toilet here and there's about four or five fire rings here. But the river's just beautiful. But that gets wide. Wow, that'd just flood right out. Well, I haven't seen land like that down yeah. the Beautiful sunny morning after about three or four hours of rain last night. So our challenge for today is to repair the hose for the washers that a mouse or some sort of rodent chewed through probably yesterday we think while we we're on the road. We found some mouse droppings under the bonnet and a lovely big hole chewed through the washer. So we can't clean the windscreen. So current plan is to head down towards Dargo and hopefully stop at Harrietville and get a piece of hose so I can repair it. We'll see how we go. Where to now? Where to now? So it should be sort of just here, around here on the right somewhere. Yep, that's there. I remember it. Close to caravan. And because over certain lakes. We've just come onto the Dargo High Plains Road um, and it's just turned to dirt and we've got some lovely views ahead of us but most interestingly we have snow on this table in front of us here. And we've actually seen snow on some of the peaks so we're going to see how we go with that because we didn't really bring any snow gear with us. Beautiful view though. All right, so let's have a look to see what damage our little mouse friend did. Have a look around here. So if we take a look here, this is the hose that feeds the water to the windscreen washers on the front. The back one's fine, but a little mousy friend nibbled through the hose here. So now I'm going to try and fix it somehow. We haven't managed to find anything to fix it with, so I'm just going to pull something out of my spares and bodgy it up somehow. We'll see how we go. So I've just been through all my spares and things. I'm pulling everything out of the back of the truck, which is great. And I found some boost hose. 
which is, looks like it's just about the right diameter, I think, to go inside this other hose here. And what I think I'm going to do is cut these off, push this through, and then I'll probably cable tie it to hold them in place. And hopefully that will do the job. So let's have a go at that, hey? Can't take too much off, they want much to play with. And this is why I carry a crazy amount of spares. I carry everything, hose, I carry fencing wire, which is useful for so many things. Lube it up a little bit. Let's see if we can push it in here. Hey, that looks like it's gonna do the trick. Perfect. I was considering how I permanently fix this like by replacing the whole hose, but this might be good enough actually, long term. Stupid mouse. I mean, I assume it's a mouse. And I'm thinking he sat here, had his meal on our hose, and then hopefully bogged off and fell under the wheel. Okay, so that seems to be in place. Now I'm gonna go grab, grab a few cable ties. And I'll cable tie that off because I think there's a bit of pressure in these when they're pumping. So we'll just see what happens. Okay, and we're back with some cable ties. Which are carrying the back door of the truck. It's awfully handy. Okay. We could do bush mechanics with Glenn. And we'll do the second one. Just don't want them popping off. I mean, this isn't, isn't like it's a critical repair or anything. I mean, it's only the windscreen washers. But if we don't clean the windscreen, you guys don't get clear footage. I'll just chop those off. And then we'll give the washers a go and see what happens. The verdict is... Winner! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We have washers. Job done. There we go. Pretty simple fix. Stupid mouse. Today we're having lunch on the side of the road. We're having heated through pumpkin soup. Yep, that's right. I just fogged up the lens. Hopefully that'll unfog in a second. I just made some pumpkin soup before we left home, froze it, popped it in the fridge, and now it's been in the fridge for a few days, it's defrosted. Should be delicious. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> and now we have windscreen wipers at work. Not snow here. So we've just got to the bottom of Blue Rag Range Track and we're about to turn up it. And there's actually snow on the ground behind us. And up we go. We've actually driven this track a couple of times now. We uh, drove it many years ago and we've run a few club trips up here when we've done uh, high country trips. I think this is our, probably our first time solo. Skip 
bits of snow. Oh, snow on the gum tree. Do you go up the same way as you come down? Uh, yeah, you do. And there's, a, there's a junction about halfway up. One goes down towards um, Talbotville and the other one comes back out this way. Oh, that's Going down this. somewhere there. Yeah. We go. A lot of trail guides will tell you that Billy Goats is a difficult track and it's certainly not for the faint of heart but uh, we probably rated it as a medium for us. It's not a hard drive in a suitably uh, capable vehicle. You're going to need low range, you're going to need clearance, um, you're going to need decent tyres but it's uh, a fun drive and it's a spectacular view. I'm right. <laughs> yeah, that would have been bad. <laughs> it's gonna be the cloud. That's alright. Still nice views out. That might add to the atmosphere actually. This is not on the actual mountain. Nice views out this way. Beautiful. I think like, I'm coming to the top of this several times on the climb up. No worries, you're the last one? 
Yeah. <laughs> Ever done it before? Have you done it before? No. It's beautiful up the top. <laughs> Enjoy. Have a nice day. See ya. Oh wow, look at the cloud on the hill over there. Yeah. A little bit of cloud's quite nice actually. I know where it goes. <laughs> there we go. So do we keep going over this or do we go back down? No, you go back down. You can keep going. Apparently it goes down to um, a river. But I've never been down there. I don't know if it's going down there on my own. Iconic shot for the truck. Beautiful. That way. Oh, you can put the truck next to the tree and take it in 360 degree view. There's no one here. Here we are up on top of Blue Rag after a really nice little drive. And we've got the place all to ourselves. We passed a couple of cars coming up and they were um, first timers. They said they loved it up here and it's beautiful today. There's a little bit of wind blowing, uh, not terribly bad. And there's a little bit of cloud which is just adding to the atmosphere. But it's lovely up here now. Getting towards the top of Blue Rag, there's an intersection and you can go left or right and it's hard to know where to go unless you've been there before. We chose right, which is good, that was no, the way. No, you don't want to make that left turn there. And Glenn's just popped out to have a look and said you don't want to make that left turn. So you might want to check that out yourself when you're here. It goes straight off the edge of the cliff. Good to know. That bit where you're not sure? Veer right would be our advice. <laughs> and that completes the end of Blue Rag. Back down again. All good? Yep. Macmillan Road. Turning right in 
into McMillan Road and heading down towards Talbotville. certainly been one of the more interesting drives of the day. From a terrifying point of view. From a terrifying <laughs> Grassy it is. Lovely. We're camping at a place called Talbotville tonight, which is a campsite. It's about 15 20 minutes up the road on the tar from Dargo and then probably another 45 minutes in on the dirt. Um, it's a precarious little drive down the side of, on the side of a cliff. Uh, there's a gorgeous campsite in here. Every time we've been here before it's been roaringly busy. There's probably 20 cars in here, but it's such a big campsite and the space out. And we've got most of this end of it to ourselves. Behind me is the river. It's the Crooked River. We're going to go and drive along that tomorrow. Um, and there's a river crossing there too, you can cross the river right here. There's no fruit on the fruit trees though, that we found in summertime. Clarissa says there's no fruit on the fruit trees here, but there was when we were here in summertime. There's also no flies, which there was in summertime. So, horses for courses I guess. And no cows at the moment. And there's no cows at the moment either, but there is cow poo. Quite a bit of snow back there, hey? Yeah. I feel like we should have some sort of thematic music. Thematic? Thematic. Or thematic. <laughs> well, you can overlay that later. <laughs> a bit of Flight of the Valkyries. <laughs> I'm not sure I can get that on um, the, the free music channels. I can sing it on repeat. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. You're not including that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know what to say. How to start? Mm. Tell them where we are. Okay. <laughs>